we see when Gordon gets replaced that he's just very robotic. He doesn't have a lot of feelings. He's just he's a very robot-y robot. But then when Bullock gets replaced, he's still like Bullock. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. People of Earth, I am Dark Side, Lord of Apocalypse. Service with a smile. I know about all your other major enemies, but you never mentioned him. He was the biggest, wasn't he? Oh, come on, it's Lex Flippin' Luthor. Why should we trust him? What, like a bunch of super friends? More like a Justice League. Connor, we once again are running duo squads. Oh yeah, Fortnite hype. And we talked about, or we're about to talk about Heart of Steel, and if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? I always have to pause and think about that title because it's so long. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I kept thinking it was if you're so smart, if, you, if you're so smart, then why aren't you rich? But no, it's not even that. Yeah, you know, Riddler, his his first episode, it has to have like a title that's a brain teaser or a tongue twister. Yeah, <laughs> one that's got to trick you. It's got to be a riddle. <laughs> it's like he he well he tricked me, he riddled me. Yeah, he riddled me too. He riddled me. He's been <laughs> riddling me for about ten years. Jeez, that that's a lot of riddles. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> jumping into Heart of Steel. First of all, I think this is a pretty interesting episode to make a two-parter. So Connor. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, well, th during the first episode, I was kind of thinking, I don't know if this is going to be an episode that I think deserves a two-parter. I definitely think that they did a good job at making it a two-parter, even if I don't think it had enough material to be one. I think they definitely padded it out well enough. Uh, like you know, with obviously the bodies being taken over and stuff like that with Gordon being replaced, Bullock being replaced. Um, you know, it's a plot line that's been done so many times with people being switched out. Agent Shield did it really well. Um but yeah, is it just me or really was the art style in this episode a little bit different? I thought Batman looked very different in this, just drawn a little bit differently. Uh it could have been. I I don't really notice that stuff a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought Lucius looked a lot different as well. I'm sure you'll probably notice a lot of episodes, like, especially the better episodes, they'll probably have better animation compared to a lot of the episodes. Okay. I, I did really like the, this animation. Yeah, they send, like, certain episodes out to be, they sent certain episodes out to be animated by certain companies, and some episodes are, like, animated by different companies, so that's why you'll notice slight differences. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I thought it, it still looked pretty, pretty great. Um... It, I did not expect this to be Barbara Gordon's first appearance. When uh, Jim like was introducing her, I was like, well, no way. She's finally in this. Yeah, really interesting episode to introduce her in, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, it was not what I not what I, how I expect her to be introduced. Um, That's part of the reason I'm okay with this being a two-parter, although it is kind of an odd choice, is that it does introduce Barbara and kind of set her up. Yeah, exactly. Like... It just the, all the the technology stuff. It is another kind of thing about comic book stuff. Kind of like how I feel about kind of mobster and gangster stuff. That's one of my least favorite aspects of superhero stuff, comic book stuff. Supercomputers and stuff like that is also another thing that I'm not big on. This really reminded me kind of of you know Omac. Omac. The yeah, the big thing that uh, big computer that Bruce builds that causes infinite crisis and all that. Um, I thought this was kind of similar to that, where this computer was starting to take over people and was starting to kind of grow and grow and grow. Um, I would have liked it to be OMAC, but I get why it was. Actually, OMAC wasn't even around. OMAC doesn't, isn't around in comics for another 10 years or so. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was maybe this is even the inspiration for OMAC. I thought the computer as well, it kind of looked like a bat, like a huge bat mask. Yeah, it kind of did. Like it kind of looked like, like it had eight ears. Kind of looked like a cow to a bat armor. Yeah, exactly. It was like if Batman had a huge mech or a huge tank or something, like a Batmobile, um, but it had a bat mask on it. This is what it would have looked like. Um, Randa was an alright character. I didn't find it too interesting. I, 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 I um, around tasing people. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> it was like, and replacing them with robots. She didn't replace <laughs> like, uh, Alfred. Yeah, I was pretty sure she's like, well, I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. So what's, what's the point of replacing the butler? Because she, did she know at that point that Bruce was Batman? 
Uh, she didn't know until after she tased him because that's when she went and found the Batcave. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. So I had to look this up because I did not remember, but Hardak means holographic analytical reciprocating digital Android computer. Huh. That's so a, it's a real thing? That's a lot of big words. No, like in the show. Oh, okay. Because I sense. remember they gave the full name and then they were like Hardak. Yeah, I had to look up um, that. What was the thing called? Uh, Cybertron Industries and Carol Rossum and Randa. I had to look up this. They were comic book characters, not because I couldn't remember them at all, but no, they were originals. Yeah, you'll be seeing some more of Charles, whatever his name is. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Also, um, you know Barbara at the end when she was going into their whole kind of lair? Didn't she look exactly like Daphne from Scooby-Doo? <laughs> she kind of did. I, it was so close that I have to think that was WB kind of putting in a little, or DC even putting in a little hint to Scooby-Doo. Yeah, that's pretty cool because... Batman's crossed over with Scooby Doo quite a bit. Yeah, like maybe did does Barbara meet Daphne? That would be. <laughs> oh well, red. The redheads are meeting. <laughs> Something I've noticed with these two parters is, part two is always stronger than part one. Yeah, it's like part one is kind of setting it up and is very dialogue based, and then part two kind of gets into all the action and stuff. Like, I think Robin's Reckoning has definitely done the best of balancing parts 1 and 2. But... Yeah, and, and especially the flashbacks. Yeah, but... We gave it a, a way to do it better. Part 2 is definitely better because that's when you get all the payoff, which is probably yeah. why part 2 is typically better. Yeah, exactly. And I think this episode does a pretty okay job of balancing it, too. Like, I think this is a better episode than Cat in the Claw. Uh, oh yeah, I, I yeah, I would agree with that. But compared to the other two parters, I don't think it's as strong. Um, I see. I didn't really like kind of clownish. To be honest, there hasn't been any of the two parters that I've thought have been amazing. Two Face is probably my favorite one, but a lot of these two parters I've thought you didn't deserve to be two parters. Oh, <laughs> how did I just forget about that already? I don't know. I was like, um, <laughs> you thought okay, the well, opening was amazing. Besides Robin's Reckoning, I haven't think any of the two parters have deserved to be two parters. Really? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I would have preferred one episode devoted to the main plot and then another episode devoted to some other villain. Hmm. I think, I think Two Face and Feet of Clay were good. I thought Two Face was really good, but I didn't think it deserved to be two parter. And then Feet of Clay, I was kind of iffy on. Yeah, I'm. Um, a, I'm I was okay yeah, both with it be, cool. because both. Two Face and Feet of Clay. The first part was their origin story, and then the second part was basically the story after they became the villain. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I feel that two parts were warranted, as with Cat in the Claw. Like Catwoman's already Catwoman, so there's not much you can do in two parts, and it just yeah. felt like a lot of filler. Yeah, I felt like they they didn't really know what to do with those episodes, but they also wanted a two parter to introduce Catwoman. Yeah, and... Also, there was a bit, and this was really cool, and um, you know when Alfred gets tased, and Bruce shows up at the house? Yeah. Bruce calls Alfred once, just in his normal kind of happy, innocent Bruce voice, but then when he notices what happened to Alfred, he immediately changes to the Batman voice for the next Bruce, and oh, yeah. it was such a cool thing, like, he immediately goes into that ready-to-fight mode. Like, yeah, was... I don't know if that was on Kevin Conroy, or if that was on the script, or whatever, but whoever was in charge of that did it amazingly well. Yeah, it was like uh, in Eternal Youth, the first episode of Volume 2, the Poison Ivy episode, when he notices like what where Alfred is, that it's something Poison Ivy's doing, when he just screams Alfred, like, Alfred! Yeah. Like, you can base so much emotion and you can, feel, you can really feel the love he has for Alfred when he yells it like that. Yeah. It's like, it's it, just thinking that Alfred's in danger switches him into that ready to fight mode immediately. Yeah, because, I mean, Alfred's the closest thing he has to a father. Yeah, Alfred's kind of the biggest person in his life. Oh, yeah, well, de he is. definitely. Alfred, then Dick, at this point yeah. in his life.
and then Gordon. Those are like the big three. And then probably Tim Dray. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. Hey, he'll, he'll show who? up. The new Batman Adventures. I even forget who he is. Who is he again? Tim Drake. You remember like the young the young Justice Titans or something? No. Okay. So uh, back to this episode. Just <laughs> just, just another thing I want to throw out. This really last thing I want to throw out is, I think the standout moment of both parts is when Barbara and Batman throw the robot bullet through the bat signal. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, wait, what if that was actually Bullock, though? Like, you would have just killed him. I, one thing I, I thought was a little bit weird about the Bullock bit was that we see when Gordon gets replaced that he's just very robotic. He doesn't have a lot of feelings. He's just, he's a very robot robot. But then when Bullock gets replaced, he's still like Bullock. Yeah. He's still kind of insufferable, this annoying dick. Like, he doesn't feel like a robot. He just feels like Bullock. <laughs> they may have just programmed him better. Yeah, maybe just, like, program him to be like, so I guess, maybe, maybe sure, it's do you think they to, wanted, they want Gordon to make over more? Maybe it's easier to program robots as complete dicks than it is to, like, program love yeah, maybe. stuff into them. It's like, it's it's hard to make them for humans, but it's easy to make them hate humans. Yeah, so it's always pretty cool when Barbara was the one who called Batman to the bot signal after Jim got replaced. Oh yeah, and he gets there, he's like, where's, where's your father? <laughs> yeah. And it's like that. This bad signal isn't for you. Yeah. Then then she was like, "That man is not my father." And Batman's just like, "What do you mean?" Yeah. It's like, so you were adopted? <laughs> like, no, Batman. Yeah. She's like, "There's not bolts or anything that obvious, but he is not my father." Yeah. It's like he would not at uh, what was his name in the Teddy like Mister Wobbles or something. Yeah. He just slapped. Like it he would not have thrown Mister Wobbles off the off the couch like that. He just slapped. Jim it. Gordon doesn't do that. Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought it, like Mr. Wobbles or whatever was a pretty good plot device, I guess. Yeah, it was smart. Like it wasn't just there to be this kind of oh look, Barbara yeah. Gordon had a teddy. It's more so like this is going to be important to the plot later on. Yeah, and Gordon's which was good. more attached to it than she is. <laughs> yeah, and then when he just like check off, gun, like, don't oh, put something in a scene up. if it's not going to be necessary. Wait, what did you say? I did. I was just saying it's like Chekhov's gun where you don't put something, like, oh, yeah. you don't draw attention to something unless it's going to be important later on. Yeah. Um, I, the, the bit at the beginning was a little bit weird. Like, it was super over the top. It was like shooting rockets out of it and crawling over the place like a spider. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's some. There's one more thing I want to mention is when Bruce runs into the elevator and when all the robots go in after him, and they look up, he's a Batman. Yeah, that was a really cool entrance. I album. feel like that was kind of a reference to Batman 66, because at least in the movie, there's this scene where Bruce and Dick slide down poles, and once they get down, or go up, whatever, they're in their <laughs> costumes. That's pretty cool. Because so, I did actually write that down, that it was a really cool entrance for the character. Yeah, so I was like, I feel like that's some kind of reference to Batman 66. They didn't just want him... To go in and then come out as Batman because that would be kind of campy. That's pretty great. Yeah. So, do you have anything to add? Um, no, not really. I think we covered it. I thought I liked the Barbara Gordon stuff. I liked the Wayne Enterprises stuff, but I didn't really like much else because the whole robots replacing people plot is something that's been done a little too much. Um, so I thought the main plot was a little boring, but I liked most of the side stuff. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Like, robot plots and stuff don't interest me. Yeah. So, letter grades. I'd give it a C+. Plus. Same page. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. C+. Plus. I'm the new Everest. <laughs> I think it was slightly uh -huh. better than the Catwoman episode. Yeah. So, getting in to the Riddler's introduction episode. If you are so smart, why aren't you rich? I had to think about yeah. it. <laughs> um, Riddler's probably my least favorite Superman villain, so it was a bit weird to see him show up in this. Um, not nah, jokes. jokes. <laughs> Riddler's my favorite Batman villain. Uh, well, I, I know I always say he's my favorite, but then I also say Two Face is my favorite. I'd say Riddler and Two Face are on the same level oh, yeah. of Batman villains for me. Connor, first of all, I want to bring something up because this is probably gonna make you happy, but I drew this parallel. 
I think Riddler's motivation to like become the Riddler and Clock King's motivation to become the Clock King mm. is kind of similar, but I feel like Riddler, he got directly screwed while Clock King got indirectly screwed. You know, I didn't think about that, but yeah, I have. I love it. Because they, they I think both you're got 100% screwed right. out of like millions of dollars, but yeah. Clock King. They, they both became the people they were because of their bosses yeah. kind of freaking them over. Yeah, I like that. Um, we got Dick Grayson again, which is cool. I really like the scene where Dick was playing the, the video game and then oh, after yeah. just stand over him, like watch him play it. And then Bruce in the background is just kind of yeah, trying to figure out all the riddles. The Riddler then, yeah. The riddle on the entire time. I love it's like, what's the name of his nightclub? The Wasteland. And Dick's like, oh, the Wasteland. That's the answer. That was really cool. Uh, one more scene like that. Um, I thought the way Enigma looked was interesting. The like, the kind of red-haired thing isn't what I'm used to seeing for his character. Yeah, I thought the red but hair was, was, it was interesting new as well. I also thought he sounded his his voice was a little bit different than what I'm used to. Yeah. Like when I think of Riddler, I just I even when I'm reading the comics, I always have the Arkham voice in my head. So I think that the Arkham voice for Riddler is super good. I think it's the best version of the character. Yeah, see, I always have this voice in my head. Just oh, because, really? Yeah, I mean, I I watched this before I played the Arkham games, though. So okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the Arkham was probably my first experience with the Riddler. I want to say, well, besides Jim Carrey, I think either Jim Carrey or the Batman, which was who was it? It was a who plays Freddy Krueger. Robert England. Oh yeah. Robert England voiced him. I, I that was probably the first one I saw. Yeah, he, he's a great character. I love him. Um, I thought the end bit was cool, where like all the riddles and stuff with Batman and Robin trying to get through it all. I did think that I thought it was a decent episode, but I would I would have kind of liked a better debut for the character, in my opinion. I think the end bit especially was a little bit too over the top for a debut Riddler episode. Like, I would have expected something more kind of small scale with Batman just having to solve smallish riddles to find, you know, Nigman and all that. Maybe Nigma's trying to blow up a bus or something and like he has to solve riddles to fix the bus. I don't, I wouldn't expect this big whole thing where they have to go through a huge maze of riddles. Oh, I love this episode because the maze was like it tied into the game because it was the same maze yeah. from the game. I, I get that. That was that was a cool tie-in. And the whole reason is because it's his game, but his boss screwed him out of it. Now he's gonna try to kill his boss in the maze. But he's yeah. a Riddler, so he has to test Batman. He's like, Batman, can you save this guy? <laughs> it's like Batman, can you do this? I did like that. Though. I like when Riddler Batman. And especially I love how when Batman beats Riddler and Riddler's like, no, you can't do that. I'm smarter than you. Yeah. you know, that whole kind of back and forth with the smart thing. Also, the boss guy being kidnapped by Riddler was nice because fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah. He, him and Ferris Boyle are the worst. Yeah, definitely. What did you think of the initial interaction between Riddler and Batman when they go to the Wasteland and it's just kind of Batman and Robin fight these thugs and then at the very end, Riddler, you know, he has his old boss and like the whatever kind of cuffs he made. That I thought cool. that was really cool. Um, I, that was probably my favorite part of Riddler in the episode. I thought it was after that with the maze bit that it got a little bit too much for me, but it was most of what came before that was really good in my opinion. Yeah, Especially the, that interaction. When he shoots Robin with the Chinese finger trap thing. Yeah, exactly. Dude, that, Robin... That was, that was cool. When he was like, it's getting hot in here, He part of that finger trap was still on fire. I'm like, is Batman going to put that out? <laughs> What's Batman going to do with that? <laughs> Batman just kind of smiled and like shaked his head. <laughs> uh, oh, Enigma. Uh, or Nashton, uh, as they're going with there. What do you think of the riddle when they when they found out about the maze? How it was a uh, Morse code? That was interesting. I didn't think that was pretty cool. Yeah, and it was something to do with... I forgot the first part, but corn. Oh, yeah, and they're like main yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Batman's that like, was in the yeah. Batmobile, wasn't it? Or the back wing? Yeah, Batmobile. Okay, yeah. Batmobile. Batman was like, maze... Yeah. I was like, what goes yeah. with me? It was interesting. 
because I never knew corn meant maize until I saw that episode. <laughs> I was like, oh. Huh. I, 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 corn was a maze? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was like, I don't think I knew that till this year, but then I remember. No, I did. <laughs> yeah, I really love this episode. I think, like, I mean, it was pretty big scale for an introduction episode, but I don't mind that because we waited yeah. so long for Riddler. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It took them so long to bring him in. Like, there's so many other villains they brought in before Riddler. Yeah. I'm like, huh. Like and so many of the villains as well have gotten multiple episodes. Like, they brought in the Sewer King, Man Bat, and the Clock King before Riddler. All right, that, let's not get crazy. Clock King and Man Bat are iconic villains. <laughs> best villains, even. Yeah, the best trio of villains. Yeah. Like, Sewer King, I, I get where you, what you're saying about Sewer King. I still think he's a pretty great villain, but I get what you're saying about him. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I, I really like the maze because he's the one that designed it in the game. So of course he'd like know how to build it and all that. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I I, I just I liked how it was called back to video game stuff. I liked how Dick was kind of better at it because he had played the game. Yeah, when they get in, uh, Dick's like, "This probably isn't a good time to tell you, but no one's made it through the or to the center of the maze." <laughs> <laughs> like, well. You have it, and Batman hasn't been up against it yet, so. Yeah, really cool riddles, like, uh, when they had to select the keys and they were musical notes. Yeah. Stuff like that, and, like, the Arab thing, how you always eat with your right hand, apparently. Yeah. And they went to the right it, that, that, It's a cool little fact thing, kind of like how the, um, the Mad Hatter was perchance to dream, where it's, like, dreaming or reading comes from the left side of the brain and dreaming comes from the right, or it might be the other way around. Yeah, and then when they get... It's like, cool, things like that. Yeah, it's really cool. And then uh, when they get to the riddle that Robin failed earlier, that Alfred was like, just <laughs> gave him the answer <laughs> to. Like, Alfred's like, I'm wiser than you, sir. And Batman, like, you don't understand. Batman, Bruce, goes, Batman goes in the wrong door, and Robin's like, that's the wrong answer, but the hand, or whatever. And Batman's like, that's what I want. <laughs> I love that, just because, like, Batman cheats when he has to. He does whatever yeah. it takes to win. Batman does what he wants, which is what is cool about the character. Then what did you think of the final riddle with the Minotaur? Um, that was that was a cool bit. Yeah. Um, easy. And uh, um, the Minotaur just kind of gets in. Reminded me of the of, uh, Harry Potter on the uh, Philosopher's Stone. Why? Where they, like, you know, at the end with the chess bit? With the where they're all playing chess? With the oh, yeah, chess yeah, yeah, at the yeah. back. Bit, and then the last piece kind of just surrendered yeah i know what you're talking about yeah i was like that's that's what i thought of yeah like when it kneeled down this minotaur yeah exactly yeah i like how he like the minotaur spits out this long riddle and then batman's like that's easy the human brain <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's easy like i beat you enigma yeah that's what the bond voice and then riddler's like screw you i'm smarter i'm gonna kill him anyway <laughs> It's like uh, I'm the real, the real Batman. Also, I think this is only the second episode where the bad guy got away. Um. Well, I mean, Joker got away a couple times, or he only got away once. Well, I guess like Laughing Fish, he got away. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> oh, Laughing Fish, he was pretty. He got away with that one. Yeah, but you were meant to think he was dead or something. Yeah. But really, yeah, with the, the he, shark he straight thing. up got out of there. He's like, I'm about to be out of the city. <laughs> See, like, Scarecrow gets caught, caught at a lot of the end of the episodes, but by the time, next time we see him, he's always escaped again. Yeah. So, there's that. That happens with a lot of the villains. No, Arkham like, is haha, we caught them and they're never going to escape until the next episode when they'll be gone by the start. Arkham should invest in a better security or something. Arkham just needs facility. a big old renovation. <laughs> Joker flew out of there in a Christmas tree. He needs to <laughs> check in. Yeah, exactly. That. <laughs> how do you even get the material to do that how do you I get have no to work in asylum uh, yeah and then it was, um, yeah. Then, then the very last round of the episode when Batman's like how much is a good night's sleep really worth because you know Riddler's out there looking for that guy yeah uh, that makes I me like so that happy because I want Riddler to give that guy what he deserves does it take Long for Riddler to come back. He'll come back later in this volume. Oh, okay, it's probably towards the end. I think it's actually only like eight eight episodes down the line. Oh wow! Yeah. So 
Uh, Eight episodes. It's like yeah. a whole lifetime. So, Connor, what would you give this episode? Um, I was going to give it a C-, minus, oh but after talking about it for a decent bit, I'm going to bump it up to a C. A C? Yeah. Really? I just, I don't know, I did, it was a little over the top for a Riddler uh, debut. Uh, I'm going to give it an A. Wow. Yeah, I love this episode. More than Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne and uh, Night of the Ninja. Yes. Wow. You're a true. You're a true Riddler fan, true and true. Yeah, Riddler's my second I ain't, favorite. Villain. I ain't got nothing. Yet. Second favorite Batman villain. Anyway. He's like my twelfth favorite Flash villain. <laughs> anyway, next time we will be back with three episodes of Batman the Animated Series. Speaking of the Joker, we're getting the return of the Joker. Joker's Wild, then Tiger Tiger, and Moon of the Wolf. Tiger Tiger, Bronze Tiger? I wish. Oh. <laughs> it's Catwoman. Oh. It's a Catwoman oh, really? episode. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> With a weird that's twist. That's not even, that's not fair. It, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, Connor. Will Evers be with us next time? Who knows? Well, you know, that one actually is also a cliffhanger for us because we really don't know. He actually might be. Yeah, we have no idea. Will Connor be here? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, I'll probably will be. I'm going to try and be here no matter what. <sighs> okay, thank you all for watching. Thank you. You are a fool, Mockridge, to think you can get away with this. Your amoral greed is no match for an intellect like mine. Oh, yeah? Then tell me something, Eddie. If you're so smart, why aren't you rich?